create your identity and yes. make sure that you are selling yourself to look like $10 million. Hey, my name is Jenna Kutcher and I am obsessed with all things business, marketing numbers, and helping you to navigate both the messy and the magical seasons of this thing called life. I'm a small town mama who took a $300 camera, grew a successful photo biz, and now I work from home and run a seven figure online business. I teach you the tried and true secrets to building a career you adore. Shy away from the real talk? (laughs) No way. Money, hardship, growth, loss, and marketing are all topics we discuss here. Think of this as your one-stop shop for happy hour with a gal pal mixed with business school. Pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. Admit it. Does social distancing and quarantine have you going back into the deep reality TV show archives? One of my favorite shows of all time has to be Laguna Beach, and I still watch all of the spinoffs that continue to grace our television screens to this day. So when the name Low Bosworth rolled through my inbox, I totally did a double take. Like, the Low Bosworth wants to come on my show when I've been watching her on TV for years? Now, I promised not to be a fangirl throughout the entire interview, but I feel like you and I are so similar and we grew up watching the same shows and following the same celebs. The Laguna Beach cast were some of the earliest influencers and it's so fun to see how Lo Bosworth leveraged that platform and created something of her own. But it wasn't exactly a straight line from a TV career to running her own woman's wellness company. Her career is rich with learning curves and pivots and honestly, I'm not sure you've heard this part of Lo's storyline before. She's a reality star we adored, now innovating for women's wellness in ways that you are going to love. Here she is, without further ado, Lo Bosworth. Pinch me. Thanks to Fiverr for supporting Gold Digger. It's so easy to find freelance talent for your business or your project. Don't waste any more time. Get 10% off in the service you deserve by going to FIVERR.com and use the code Gold Digger. Now more than ever is the best time to start your email list. Are you up for a challenge? I built out a free mini course to take your list from zero to 250 subscribers, templates and tech all included. Sign up at listbuildchallenge.com. That's listbuildchallenge.com. All right, Lo, welcome to the show. I have been so excited to sit down at the mic with you and to feel like I'm spending time with a friend from afar. So welcome to the Gold Digger podcast. Oh, thanks, Jenna. Hi. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited. This is going to be so fun. Okay. So a lot of people know the Lo Bosworth, which it's kind of crazy when you think about it, like high school you. How many of us would want people to know the high school version of ourselves, right? And so I want to go and just talk about your shift, like who is Lo Bosworth today and how did your story lead you to where you are as we sit here together? <laughs> Absolutely. We can, we can jump into it for sure. <laughs> I've never thought about that. Like who would want to see your high school version of yourself oh, right now? <laughs> I would not like, you know, when like there's those time hops and it's like, you look at your eyebrows and you're like, how did those even exist at that point? Yes. Like, The fact that the world knows that version of you and like maybe has missed that transformation. It's just, I'm so excited to have this conversation because I feel like this part of your story is the one that excites me the most. So tell me all the good stuff. Thank you. Absolutely. Gosh, where to begin? I guess I'll start with where I'm at right now and then we can kind of work backwards from there. Does that work? (laughs) That sounds great. That's perfect. So it's April 2020 right now, and we are living through the COVID-19 crisis. If anybody happens to listen to this in a year or two from now. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And we're working from home. I am the founder and CEO of Love Wellness. We make clean, body positive, total body care products for women. And we are in the fourth year of the business. I launched it in October of 2016. So we're entering a really interesting growth stage right now in the history of the brand. And we're working from home. My team is about 15 people right now. And we are sitting in a really interesting spot. Personal care, health and wellness, ingestible beauty. It's still a pretty significant white space if you are approaching it in a thoughtful way. And at Love Wellness, 
the message that we take out into the world is one of kindness. And our motto is to love yourself well. And you can interpret that in many different ways, right? You can love yourself well from that kindness perspective. You can love yourself well from a health and healing perspective. And I think when it comes to the category of health and wellness brands for women, you know, no matter what kind of product offering you have, we do a really good job of being an advocate for women. Um, We have a really incredible wellness advisory board of doctors, nutritionists, nurse practitioners that create expert content. Because I recognized very early on that in this space, we really have to educate people about not only how their bodies work, but about how products and ingredients work with their bodies and work against their bodies. In the personal care space, when I first started the business, I really had a lot of experience using products from legacy brands. I was at the drugstore all the time because when I started the brand, I was going through a health crisis. I was depressed and anxious and I was at the OBGYN all of the time. And Mm -hmm. I was suffering from vitamin deficiencies that I I wasn't able to discover for about 18 months as kind of the root cause of a lot of my physical and neurological symptoms. And so I was at the drugstore all the time, just like I said, and I was buying products from all these old school brands, quote unquote, for women. And I found myself so disappointed with what the offering was, not only from a formulation standpoint, but secondarily, how they actually worked with my body, like how effective Mm -hmm. they were. And in some cases, they made things that I was dealing with worse, not better. And finally, the messaging, you know, that has been shared from these types of legacy brands for a really long time, in my opinion, has been pretty anti-feminist in nature. I don't think that that is, was necessarily like intended, you know, but, but that's how we have been made to feel bad about the need to take care of our bodies as women for a really long time. And so going through that experience, which I know that most women have gone through, I decided that I wanted to do something about it because through a lot of dedication and care, my doctors were able to help me get better. And it's because I changed my lifestyle and I started using products that were more naturally derived or clean, you could say now. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's a buzzword, right? And I got better when I made that shift. And I saw such a huge opportunity after I was able to help myself to help other women. And so it's, it's made up of many components, right? At Love Wellness, it's about products that are clean, that actually work. It's about a kind and straightforward message, and it's about education. And we are doing all three of those things really well. And I think that it contributes in a really meaningful way to why this business is really successful or more successful than other brands that try to grow in this space. Like above all else, we're, we're just about kindness. Well, it's evident in every piece that you put out in every bit of the story. I feel like you do a beautiful job of weaving stories through just the way that you show up so that if people connect with that story, then they feel like they're being spoken to and not spoken at. And I think that's a huge differentiator in marketing and kind of what you spoke about with some of the older brands is you feel like you're almost being shouted at Mm -hmm. and like symptomized versus being like heard and understood. So you do a really good job of that. Thank you. Actually, I would say, and this is one of the things that I, that's a really positive takeaway for me after spending so much time in the entertainment industry, um, which can leave a bad taste in your mouth. I think a lot of people, you know, work in entertainment and it's really a struggle for them in so many different ways as it was for me as well. But I have been in the public eye to a certain degree since I was 16 years old and I'm 33 now. And so I am, I will just say it, a master of messaging. I know from a tone perspective, what will resonate and what will not. And I think in a category that is so special, it's really important to be straightforward and honest with your consumer and not try to sensationalize what we're doing. Because that's when it starts to feel like it's not real. You know what I mean? Yes. 
Yes. It's like inauthentic where it's like, wait, are you for women or are you for profit or are you, what does this look like? You know? Yes. It's, it's interesting. <laughs> and you can be for both. It's just a way to navigate that with grace, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as a business owner, of course, like you're trying to run and operate a successful business, but I think that you can do it in a way that is really positive, that brings forth your true desire and message to the world. And I think that that is what we are able to do really effectively. Sorry, there's an airplane flying over. No. Nope, for, that's for fine. All listeners. Um, <laughs> it's, it's so funny. I was actually at an event last year and I was in the bathroom and the bathroom was sponsored by one of those legacy brands. And yeah. on the mirrors in the bathroom, it had these like sayings that were meant to inspire, but they really were just so tone deaf. It was like big ovary energy. <laughs> and I read that and I thought to myself, I don't want big ovary energy. I just want, <laughs> yeah, what does that I even just, mean? I just want to feel good about taking care of my body. Like what? Yes. And yes. So I think it's really funny when you look at the personal care category because you have a lot of newcomers and legacy brands that are now jumping on this like hyper, what they think is feminist messaging bandwagon. And they're really just kind of making a mockery of the whole movement without even yes. realizing it. You know yes. what I mean? Like, yes. why are you using humor to try to storytell around this category? Like, you use humor to hide embarrassment and shame. And like, they're not connecting those dots. Yeah, that's beautiful. I want to know, so let's cycle back because I feel like a lot of times when we embark on these big projects or challenges or start new business, a lot of it has to be anchored into a really strong why. And when you think about your life of reality television and kind of growing up in this spotlight, is there any significant ties that you can tie to starting your wellness company and tie it back to reality TV and just kind of that journey that you've been on for the last 18 years? Yeah, I think it's actually more straightforward than maybe what it seems. Yeah. You know, the show ended in 2010 and I immediately started to create content, whether it was blog posts or eventually a YouTube channel. And so that's what I did for a number of years and was able to build a personal brand around that pretty successfully. You know, I was able to monetize everything I was doing. And that was my full time job for a number of years, working with brands and, and creating content and continuing to tell my story because I got comfortable yeah. doing that. And so pushing it forward was not outside of anything that I was used to. Do you know what I mean? In fact, it felt yep. good to do it because I was able to be my own narrator to a certain degree. Yes. When you're on reality yes. TV, like you have no control over yes. how you're presented or portrayed. And everybody knows that now, but back then <laughs> it felt real. It, it felt, felt real. really real. <laughs> you know, I still get DMs that are like, why were you so mean to Audrina? I was like, you're <laughs> dumb. <laughs> you yes. have no idea what oh. was really happening, which was nothing more often than not on those shows. And we were filming, nothing was happening. <laughs> and, yes. then in, yes. and then in the editing rooms, they would you know, put a little magic on it and make something happen. So sorry to burst anyone's remaining bubble about reality TV. <laughs> um, but afterwards, like I said, I was really able to storytell and finally control my own narrative. And it felt like a relief and an opportunity for me to share the things that I was genuinely interested in yeah. and have a voice that felt independent for the first time in a really long time. So for me, I have always really been into cooking and, you know, into health and wellness, but my interest in that definitely grew over time. So yeah. when I was living in New York City, I still live in New York City, but I moved to New York in 2012. And I moved because I think that was really my first real experience of trying to break away from my, you know, reality TV past and history. <laughs> yes. You know, because I felt I felt heavy under that reputation, I guess, you know, yeah. like it has, yeah. has it's been uncomfortable for me to kind of be known as a reality star because, you know, frankly, like I'm highly educated. I've been working full time for years. And so to still be associated with that, 
feels a bit uncomfortable. You're like, there's for me. so much more. Yeah, like I'm a pretty <laughs> normal person and I know yes. what normal people think about reality TV. So for me, it makes yes. me feel sort of cringeworthy to a certain degree. So moving to New York in 2012 was kind of my first attempt to break out of the mold. And you know, I started a company that ended up not working out, but it had kind of its roots and ties in food and in entertaining. And from there, I went to culinary school to kind of follow my passion of of cooking because it's been something that I've always been really excited about. My mom would make dinner from scratch almost every night of the week and I would come home from school mm. and I, I would cook with her. And we would watch Julia Child and the Galloping Gourmet and, you know, it was our thing. And yeah. so I went to culinary school and at that time also had some opportunities still within entertainment, but with like Food Network and Cooking Channel to work with them and develop food content for them. And so I went to culinary school in, in New York City and it was, gosh, the time of my life. And hmm. kind of towards the tail end of that and, and once I had graduated, I started to become unwell. And the deals with the networks fell through. And I think that contributed to some of my depression I was experiencing at the time because I had this path that I was creating for myself and, and working really hard for. And I was creating so much food content and it was really resonating with people. I was publishing quite a bit to YouTube and on my blog at that time. And the audience was fully engaged with what I was doing in the food space. And like I said, I started to become unwell at that point. And so I was during that period, trying to take care of myself and trying to understand what I could do from a nutritional standpoint to help myself. And it was at that point that I really learned that food is medicine. Where you get your food from is really important. And what you put into your body is really important. Because up until that time, like I had a pretty normal average diet, like eating stuff that was processed, frozen pizzas. You live in New York City. You can get anything at any time. In addition, to also eating really clean, healthy food. And so for me, I made a huge lifestyle shift into the clean, healthy food category or consumer of food to about 80 to 90% of the time versus kind of like 50-50. And it was through that exploration with food that I really started to learn about wellness and learn about my body and about biology and about environmental things that we've all been dealing with for a really long time as a part of modern life that can make you sick. And it was through that experience that my interest in wellness continued to grow and led me down the path of founding and starting Love Wellness. And at this point, it's been four years. The company has grown 3000% in the last two years, which is like <laughs> astronomical growth. What? Um, you know, we exceeded eight figures in revenue in 2019, which is really exciting. So this is a company yes. that I started in my living room, you know, with help from my doctors, cold calling manufacturers on Long Island being like, hi, I want to make this. Can you help me? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. One thing that I think is super beautiful to point out is that a lot of times life is our greatest teacher. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times people get really nervous to pivot into new spaces when they don't necessarily consider themselves an expert. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, I feel like so many people rely on titles or initials after your names or things like that. And I know like for me, when we went through our miscarriages and I started digging into my body and hormones and all of these different things, like I learned, I was probably a better student of learning that stuff because it it impacted my goals, my dreams, my life, my health, the way I felt every day. Yeah. And it's pretty wild to me because I feel like a lot of the most successful entrepreneurs maybe weren't an expert to begin with in the topic that they are now successful at, but life through them this lesson and this opportunity to dig in and to learn. And I love that you're smart. You're, you're so smart at like bringing on advisors in, and people in the areas that you need to have that gap filled in. But I also just think it's such a beautiful reminder for people listening that you've been through something likely in your life where you've become a student. I mean, think of the nights. Did you, were you like this too, where I was like Googling everything, like finding, give me every piece of data, give me every information was like power. Did you feel like that too? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, what was interesting when I was first starting the company is that there was a 
huge lack of information out there, yeah. you know, about yes. women's health and wellness. And so what we have been able to do in a really unique way is drive the conversation and become a, a source of information and a curator yes. of information in a really powerful way. We have a community that we're building at Love Wellness called the Love Club, and all of our advisors contribute to it very regularly. And there's forums, and, and we have a lot of interesting stuff coming out actually later this summer with community. Um, I and I created it. community because there was nothing on the internet, nowhere you could go to find this kind of information you were looking for. Like, yes. here's an example. Like a year or so ago, I missed a couple birth control pills and I like was wondering if that could cause PMS symptoms. And like you Google yep. it and nothing comes up. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. <You know? laughs> More often than not, if you are typing some issue about a quote unquote women's problem into the internet, you are going down a black hole <laughs> of yes. misinformation. And yes. in addition to creating great products for women, we want to solve that problem also of yeah. what is a good source of information for you when it comes to your body like what is good trusted information and for us that comes from experts yep i love that and i think it's so powerful because a lot of times we find ourselves maybe searching for answers and we realize there aren't any and for some people that would be an easy place to be like well nobody's interested in it but for innovators and people that are driven like you and like i am we're like all right let's fill in this gap let's create it and i think that's kind of the difference that sets people apart when it comes to entrepreneurship and people being willing to do that work yeah absolutely that's something Thank you for pointing that out because that's hard to kind of put into words or explain. But for me, yeah. whenever I can't find the answer, I think to myself, white space, yes. <laughs> how can I solve yes. this problem? What can I do about it? And that was the original feeling that I had about love wellness and, and the types of products that we're offering. And truly with every product we bring to market, like, does it pass my sniff test in that regard? And yeah. if the answer is no, then okay, how can we differentiate? And if the answer is yes, then it's like, okay, let's lean into this. Yeah, I love that. Can we get a standing ovation round of applause for the freelancers right now? Navigating this season in the gig economy is a challenge. And so I need to send a massive thank you to my favorite freelancers on Fiverr. I turn to Fiverr whenever we need to bridge a talent gap for a new project or simply pick up some of our video or graphic needs when we're overloaded. Whether you're launching your first business, scaling your current business, or in need of extra support to complete a project, Fiverr is there to help you evolve, adapt, and grow. Fiverr connects businesses with freelancers who offer hundreds of digital services, including graphic design, copywriting, web programming, film editing, and more. You can search by service and deadline, sort by price and reviews, and narrow in on the precise freelancer you need to get the job done on your budget and your timeline. Support a freelancer and get your work done with Fiverr. Check out Fiverr.com today and receive 10% off your first order by using my code GOLDDIGGER. It's so easy. Find all the digital services you need in one place at F-I-V-E-R-R.com code gold digger. Again, that's fiverr.com code gold digger. I know, I know things are crazy and unpredictable, which is actually why now is the best time to start your email list. If you've been wishing you had a way to reach your clients, your paying customers and fans with important information at the click of a button and without having to worry about algorithms, then this is for you. Are you up for a challenge? I built out a free mini course with templates ready and tech taken care of that will lead you through a five-day workshop to take your list from zero to 250 subscribers. In a time where there's a lot of uncertainty, you can be directly speaking to your people via their inboxes and offering up your services, resources, and the support that they need right now. Can you commit just 4% of this week to getting yourself results and following through? That's literally one hour a day, Monday to Friday for one week to get big results. Are you ready? Sign up for free at listbuildchallenge.com. That's listbuildchallenge.com for my free email list building challenge. I'll see you on the inside. 
One thing that I want to talk to you about, because as we look kind of at the climate that the world is navigating right now, and just the fact that a lot of people are kind of feeling lost or feeling like they don't have purpose or wanting to make like a powerful pivot. I feel like identity is a word that just keeps popping into my head these days as people are struggling to maintain their jobs or keep their jobs Mm -hmm. or whatever that looks like. And we're losing a sense of our identity. And I want to know as someone who has successfully pivoted your identity from being a reality star girl to now the CEO of a powerful, wonderful company that's contributing really positively to the world. Do you have any advice when it comes to those kind of identity shifts or if people are feeling that imposter syndrome? Yeah, I would say don't live in fear and never give up. For me, yeah. like this is something that we talked to Rizzy, who's our in-house publicist, yeah. about a lot. You know, when we first hired her, I was like, Rizzy, people still don't know that I go to work every day. Yes. <laughs> and, yes. <laughs> and, and run this business. And, you know, this is something that I've been trying to overcome for a really long time. And, you know, why don't they know that, you know? Yeah. And so she really is the one that that gave me the advice that I am passing on to you. She was like, listen, if you tell your story and continue to tell your story, eventually the narrative will change, but you can never give up on it. And you have to be consistent and you have to be willing to put yourself out there. And, you know, for the first sort of three years of operating this business, I still wasn't really putting myself out there. I wasn't doing podcasts all the time. You know, I wasn't doing interviews all the time. I was mostly just focused on building the brand. And I kind of had a blind spot when it came to that storytelling element as it pertains to myself. And I just kind of hoped that people would recognize it. And so I think when it comes to how do you position yourself in market you know, who are you? What is your identity? First and foremost, you have to work on your own confidence more than anything else Mm -hmm. and be willing to get a little bit uncomfortable and truly just put yourself out there. Like, who are you? It's up to you to decide. (laughs) Nobody else gets to decide that for you. And once you can hone in on who you are, just lean into it and just continue to tell that message and tell it in a really innovative and creative way. I actually had a conversation with Jacqueline Johnson, who is the founder of Create and Cultivate yesterday. Yes. And um, we were talking about, you know, people who may be looking for a job, people who've been laid off, people who've been furloughed, you know, because it is a really uncomfortable moment right now from an economic perspective. And she had some really good advice. She said, you know, there's so much access to different classes online that you can take to develop a skill or improve a skill to help you with your pivot. And I thought that that was really good advice. And we also came up with the idea together to like, go buy your name URL and, you know, go on WordPress or on Squarespace or whatever these websites are and buy a $25 theme that you can automatically put onto your website and like create your identity and make sure that you are selling yourself to look like $10 million and brush up your resume and have somebody look at it. You want to get different eyes on the stuff that you're putting out into the world because more often than not, they're going to find a grammatical area. Error, they're going to have tips on how to improve something that you're saying about yourself. And like, so if you're struggling right now and kind of looking for the next thing, take this time to create and build that identity. I think it's so brilliant. I think there has never been a better time, especially for our generation to make ourselves valuable. Like what value can you add to someone or something or a company? Because now as we navigate what is to come where, you know, companies hopefully will begin hiring soon, they're going to be looking for the best value ads, what's moving the needle the most. And if that's you, you want that to be you. But I agree. I think that we're entering an age where every person is essentially a brand, which is so weird to say. But in reality, like brands can be multi-passionate and they can pivot and they can have many interests. And like even looking at 
how you show up. You don't just talk about love wellness all the time. You talk about your sweatpants from Target and you show throwback photos and you've created this identity that is nostalgic so that people connect with your message mm-hmm. and then they connect with your mission. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's so powerful these days. Mm, thank you. Also yeah. as a business owner, just as you were saying that about, you know, like this is the opportunity for our generation to really like go out and be able to be helpful. I was just thinking yes. through sort of some of the people that we're kind of hiring right now or, you know, spaces that we need to fill on our team. And so yeah. I would recommend to anybody that's listening, learn how to code. <laughs> yes. You want, a, yes. you want a job, learn how to code, forget how to optimize Instagram. <laughs> Truly. Yes. Yes. Like we do not need people that can help us with brand partnerships. We need people that can code and that can build stuff. So think about that when you are trying to figure out how to be most valuable in this time, learn how to build stuff and um, really good things will come out of it. I want to know for you as a leader, what has navigating this season been like for you? I know for me, it's been like a roller coaster where it's like, we can do this. We've got this. We're pivoting. We're being creative. And then the next day, it's like, oh my goodness, is this going to last forever? How has it been being in this leadership position with your team of 16 and navigating kind of just these uncharted territories? Yeah. You know, I think, listen, any business owner has to recognize that they are the number one cheerleader for their business. And thankfully, I'm able to do that pretty naturally. It doesn't come hard to me. But I'm also willing as a leader to be vulnerable and to share Mm. when I need help and support. And I think that when you are able to humanize your role in that way, your team becomes so much more invested, not only in your business, but as you as an individual. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, just think about how you develop friendships outside of work. It's by exposing your vulnerabilities that you create deep and lasting relationships. And at work, it's really important to do the same thing, whether you are, you know, the CEO or the lowest man on the totem pole. And so I think that that is something that is really important. And, you know, from an economical perspective, like we have definitely, um, been working on our own pivot at Love Wellness, right? Um, our biggest retailer is Ulta Beauty and their retail stores are closed right now. And so we're trying to figure out, okay, how can we optimize our Ulta.com relationship? You know, when things are back to normal, like what can we invest in from a marketing perspective with Ulta to optimize our sales once that channel opens again? Um, So it's about being creative with the problems that are being thrown your way. And I will say that anybody um, who is learning how to make the best of the situation situation right now, like you're going to take these lessons into the future with you always and be able to problem solve um, in a way that other people, younger people will not be able to. And so in a lot of ways, like there's a lot of cool uh, learning opportunities in in this moment for all of us. I just want to say amen to all of that. (laughs) I'm feeling it. I'm right there with you. I want to know, I mean, you kind of touched on your starting the community and things like what is firing you up today about women's wellness and like what's making you excited these days? I think that there's been a shift in perspective on the personal care category and women's wellness in general. And women more often than not are feeling empowered is such an overused term, but we're just going to go for it. Women are feeling empowered to take care of their bodies in a way that feels good for them. And they're getting really passionate about the ingredients that go in their products. And they're getting really passionate about how does this product affect my body in a positive way. And they're getting really passionate about sustainability. And they're getting really passionate about wanting to connect with each other and tell their stories. The internet has proved to be so invaluable for us as a brand in that way because we're still dealing with subject matter that is sensitive for a lot of people. And so the internet provides you with a level of anonymity um, and comfort that enables you to storytell 
in a in a community that feels really positive and supportive, but can still be private if you want it to be. And so for us, we're really excited about that because we see our community growing organically within the Love Wellness brand. And it's really exciting to see a CPG company be able to do that in such an organic way um, with subject matter that needs to be discussed. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. And you know, it just makes me smile because even cruising the love wellness Instagram, like it makes you just, it gives you joy. <laughs> it makes you feel better. It, it helps you to see a brand that is led by a woman who has the same maybe problems or desires or areas of growth that you have. And I think that just in every single touch point that you have, um, this message resonates. And one thing that I want to really commend you on, and maybe let's touch on it for a second, is a lot of times product-based companies fall into this marketing marketing idea that you just constantly have to be pushing product, pushing product, pushing product. And I think that you have done a really good job of balancing storytelling and inspiration and education along with the product. And I know that's intentional. Can you walk me through that just a little bit? Yeah, it's it's absolutely intentional. I think it just comes back to our ability as a brand to read the room more than anything else. And I am really good at putting myself in somebody else's shoes. Like if I was served up this ad on Instagram, how would it make me feel? And so we have a really good handle on that. And maybe that is just one of my skill sets. Secret sauces. Yeah, you know, for me... It's your superpower. It's, yeah, I'm just... I have a good handle on it. And so I think I also recognized very early... And these were things that we learned along the way. I didn't know them, you know, in October of 2016, but they're lessons that we've learned is that all of those elements that you mentioned are really important and people need those things to feel comfortable within the wellness space, to want to make purchases and and to want to talk about your brand and your community. They want to know what they're getting. You know what I mean? You're putting these things in and on your body. So like you need a lot of information and we learned that lesson over time. You know what I mean? Like we constantly are iterating on our website. We're constantly figuring out how to talk about our products in a new or different way. We're constantly reading the press that we get. And like, is it negative press that like actually helps us learn a lesson about what we could be doing better? Is it positive press that lifts up and celebrates what we're doing and we know that we're on the right track? So I think that we have really as Love Wellness, we've always been a brand that is willing and able to pivot based on what our community is telling us. That's so powerful. And it's just such a good, good description of growth. (laughs) Like, I think every single entrepreneur is going to experience growing pains and pivots and need for creativity and feedback and criticism. And I think you just summed it up so well. I need to know before we sign off, what is your biggest learning moment so far during this bizarre time of isolation and social distancing? What are you discovering about yourself? You know, I'm actually just, I'm actually discovering that I can be more comfortable on my own than I ever thought before. You know, like Mm. I've always kind of struggled with like being alone and and loneliness and trying to avoid it at all costs, you know, and like if I have just gotten out of a relationship or, or I miss my family or whatever it is, I've really suffered in that loneliness. And this has enabled me to see that I'm a pretty good companion for myself Mm. and that, um, more than anything, I'm going to be okay. And I think everybody else is going to be okay too. Oh, that is beautiful. Okay. Where can everybody connect with you, find you, check out Love Wellness, give us all of the places. Sure. So I am on Instagram <laughs> at Love, at, Tell me uh, more. Not at Love Wellness, at Low Bosworth. <laughs> and thank you for your compliments on Instagram. I'm not that good at Instagram. <laughs> I don't I think post. you're fabulous. I, thank you. That's kind. But I don't post every day. I'm always like, oh, do I have to post? Our social media manager's like, post something. Um, <laughs> so I do when I'm strong armed into it. And then Love Wellness is at Love Wellness. You can find us at lovewellness.com on Amazon at Ulta. And yeah, that's about it. 
Are we ever going to see you back on TV? That's what I really want to know. <laughs> Probably not on the hills. <laughs> I don't know. For now, I'm so hyper-focused on what I'm doing and I love the CPG space. Yes. I have fallen into a category that I <laughs> can succeed at or in. Um, and so, you know, my focus is here for right now and it, it just is kind of the best feeling in the world. Mm, I can't wait to keep watching your story unfold. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. Thanks, Jen. I really appreciate it. Isn't Lo just amazing? I mean, she's so well-spoken and so brilliant. And I love getting to hear kind of the heart and the story behind the mission. I think so often we can see these brands kind of blow up and we're like, wait, where did this come from? And to hear that story behind it and to understand how intentional she is with every single piece of love wellness, I mean, it speaks for itself. But I also just really love her advice on pivoting and being in control. You are the narrator of your own story. You are in control of how you show up and present yourself to the world now and in the future. And there is no better time to focus on making yourself valuable in this season. I know this season is interesting for all of us as we continue to navigate what the new normal will become. And as we settle into life, as we know it in this moment, but I hope that today you leave feeling inspired and empowered to really take control of the things that you have control control over. I am so, so grateful that we get to share this episode with you. And thank you for hitting play on another episode of the Gold Digger podcast. I mean, the fact that I get to talk to Lo Bosworth and sit in my chair, I mean, luckiest. I have the best job in the world. Thank you. And until next time, Gold Diggers, keep on digging your biggest goals. I pray you are staying safe and well today. I'm over here giving you a virtual high five because you just finished another episode of the Gold Digger podcast. Did that go by way too fast for anyone else? If you want more, head over to golddiggerpodcast.com for show notes and all the discount codes from today's sponsors. And if you're looking for a new crew of movers and shakers like you to bounce ideas and ask questions, be sure to join my exclusive community for gold diggers on Facebook. The link's waiting for you at golddiggerpodcast.com. 